The purpose of this video is to show how we set up a small scale bioreactor system and demonstrate how to make a cheap, simple algae growing system for K-12 classrooms. Keep in mind as you are watching that we put a lot of research into setting up our lab based on our particular algae species and then applied our knowledge to building a classroom setup. Through experimentation, we found these methods simple and inexpensive, but you may be able to find alternative methods that are more ideal for you. In order to grow algae, you need algae. For our lab, we purchased specific species from a private culture collection that we had chosen based on our prior research. For classrooms, you can get algae from any lake, stream, or pond, and you can purchase monocultures from various biological supply companies. We tested four non-filamentous freshwater species from Carolina Biological S Supply Company and collected various pond samples uh, in our little tests. The advantage of ordering these monocultures from Carolina is that you hopefully know what you have and the contamination should be pretty low. But they do cost money. The advantage of pond water is the samples are free and you can take as much as you want. So for a classroom sort of idea, you can have your students go out in groups and collect algae from different sections of the lake or stream and then set the algae up in the lab and then you can compare the results, which should be different based on different areas they collected from the stream or lake. In the lab, we primarily used 500 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks. We also used two liter and four liter Erlenmeyer flasks for growing our algae. We chose to use the Erlenmeyer flask because the angled sides give us more surface area for light penetration and the narrow mouth makes manipulating the flask easy. We use two hole rubber stoppers atop all of our flasks, running airline into one hole and pressed cotton into the second hole to filter outgoing air. We avoided wide mouth glassware as it led to higher evaporation rates and the large surface area left it open for contamination. We tested 2 liter clear plastic soda bottles and 16.9 ounce clear plastic water bottles for use in classroom setups. We found both bottle types to be cheap and effective growth containers as well as green. We put two holes in the caps to run airline in and vent out excess air. In our experiments, the 2 liter soda bottles worked well for growing large cultures, but we found it difficult to grow very dense cultures. The small water bottles grew dense cultures, but at a much smaller volume. And which container is right for your classroom is up for you to decide. In order to get substantial algal growth, you're going to want to use medium. Ideally, medium replicates the algae's natural environment with excess of essential nutrients such as nitrogen and silicon. For our lab, we first purchased specific media from a culture company, and later we made our own medium using a readily available recipe on the internet and chemicals from our chemistry department. This process was pretty expensive and probably not ideal for high school classrooms. But we found fertilizer, particularly miracle Grow, all-purpose water-soluble plant food to be very effective as media at low cost. You can see how we made our miracle Grow media in our Getting Started video. With any media, be sure to use distilled water to avoid any contem chemical contaminants such as copper and chlorine. But if you don't have access to this, set your water out in a window for 24 hours as most of the chlorine will dissipate. For our setup, we used wide spectrum white grow lights with peaks at 400, 440, and 550 nanometer wavelengths. All of our lights were controlled with timers to give us a 14 hour on and 10 hours off cycle. We also used a light meter to measure and control light intensity as needed by our specific algae species. Specialized lights are not needed to grow algae in the classroom. If you are going to use artificial light, any wide spectrum plant growing light can be used. A light timer is also necessary to control duration of light so you don't stress the algae and kill it. Algae can also be grown in a windowsill. Growing in a window gives you little control over the light duration and intensity. Another potential setup for your classroom is an outdoor diffused light setup. We built a small growth chamber and covered it in a semi-transparent mesh. A diffuse setup evenly distributes light coming into the setup 
and provides a small amount of protection from disturbances such as rain and wind. When growing your algae, we highly recommend you use air pumps. This will really make the biggest difference in the rate your algae will grow because you have more algae moving around and being exposed to different amounts of light. For example, these two solutions were set up at the same time at the same concentration. This one was set up with air and this one was without. There's obviously a big difference here and after about 10 days we started seeing the visible difference in this container. For our setup, we used the Whisper Tetra 100 air pump, which we ran airline tubing from into three to four gang valves, which then we ran into Erlenmeyer flask. This allowed us to run air into 12 to 16 Erlenmeyer flasks at once. We ran our tubing in parallel rather than series, which allowed us to maintain consistent carbon dioxide levels in each flask. Air can be pumped via series, but that the bubbling will get weaker as you move from container to container and the algae will pull out the CO2. So in this example we ran one in series and by the final container there's no barely any bubbling and basically the algae will pull out all these CO2 in the first couple containers and then there will just be oxygen being pumped into the final. For a classroom setup a plastic bottle system is very effective and can be set up in the window for a complete look at how we set these systems up, check out our Getting Started video. All of our algae cultures are grown on commercially available heat mats. The heat mats are controlled by a thermostat using a temperature probe taped to the middle of the heat pad. The thermostats are set to specific temperatures, which are found through research to give us optimal growth. In a classroom setup, a heat mat is not required to grow algae. We have successfully grown cultures without using heat mats. If you are growing algae in a windowsill, be mindful of sunlight and outside temperatures, since both can affect the temperature of your algae. For cleaning and sterilization, all of our equipment is completely sterilized in autoclave. But not everyone is going to have an autoclave, so we experimented with several different cleaning agents. We found hydrogen peroxide to work the best for us and do it at a reasonable price. Simply scrub off all the relish from your equipment, place it in a jar, pour some hydrogen peroxide over it, let it sit for 24 hours. Then rinse the supplies with distilled water and you're done. You can also use a diluted solution of bleach, but through our experimentation we found that it was very difficult to get the residue after, off after you sterilized. Now that you know the supplies needed to make a bioreactor, turn it, tune in to our next video called Getting Started to learn how to make your very own. We'd like to thank the National Science Foundation, Nebraska M-Score, and Dell College for funding our research.